Welcome to another UCL Fantasy video and what I'm going to be doing today in this how to play guide is break down everything you need to know in terms of the best UCL Fantasy tips and I'm going to be discussing the captaincy which is very different to FPL, also the substitutions and how you can make manual changes. I'll be breaking all of that down and same with the chips, the limitless and the wild card. So anyone who is new or needs a refresh of this game can just get straight into it and be in a very good position to attack the new season. So without further ado, let's head straight into the video. What you see on screen is my current team and you can see it and the explanation behind every single pick in my first draft video which I uploaded the other day. But what I'm going to be illustrating with this team on screen is how you can change the captaincy and also the substitutions, how they come into play and how they affect the way you play the game. So at the moment you can see that Aspilicueta is my captain and why would you captain Aspilicueta? Well there is a thing called ball recoveries which I'll be talking about in the rules section later on in this video um, but if you filter it in by date in terms of your players um, you can see from my team at least I've got a few players on the 14th of September and I believe that Aspilicueta will be one of the highest scoring players from that day. So what you can do essentially is captain a different player uh, from each day. So at this moment in time, there's going to be two days within match day one, the Tuesday 14th of September and the Wednesday 15th of September. So what you can do is, for example, captain Aspilicueta from the team you see on screen and then if he doesn't do too well you can change the captaincy to someone who's playing on the 15th of September so I have Messi, Haaland and Salah to choose from who are three of the best captaincy options this week um, so that's pretty much uh, how the captaincy works you cannot change the captaincy to someone who's already played that would be cheating in essence so you can only change the captaincy to someone who has yet to play you can make these changes during the substitution window which are clearly illustrated in the fixture section uh, right here as you can see on screen so it should be very clear to you and speaking of substitutions the reason why for example I have a very strong bench I've got Van Dijk, Gundogan and Casemiro is because of the date so as you can see there they're all playing on the 15th of September so the second day of match day one and if those are my starting 11 playing on the 14th on the first day of the match day one if they blank I can bring them off and I can bring on these players who are yet to play on the 15th of September and it increases your chances of maximizing your returns. And that's why it's very important in UCL Fantasy to have a very good squad and especially in the group stages where there might be more rotation and I think the point ceiling is probably higher on average compared to the knockout. So hopefully that's very clear to you. So pretty much what you should take from this kind of section of the video is the captaincy. You can change it between each day, but it has to be someone who has yet to play and in terms of substitutions, you can make them manually. You don't have to you know, wait for them to be automatically done for you. So you have more control of your team and it's very important to have good squad depth. So hopefully that's very clear. If you have any further questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Now let's take a look at the chips. So we have the wild card and the limitless chip. And I discussed these briefly in my first draft video and as well as talking about my team and kind of my thoughts going into the future, I can also make a chip strategy guide. If you lot are interested, just let me know down in the comment section below as always. But with the wild card, it's essentially the same as it is in any other fantasy game, such as Euro 2020 fantasy football and FPL. So you can make unlimited changes to your team and these changes are permanent. They last more than one game week and there are budget restrictions. The limitless is quite similar yet different. So you can make unlimited changes just like the wild card. The key difference is that it only lasts one game week. So in essence, it's pretty much a free hit. But the difference between the limitless and the free hit from FPL is that with the limitless, you have no budget restrictions. So you could literally build a super team. And as long as you have three forwards, five midfielders, five defenders and two goalkeepers, you're fine. And of course, you have an eligible formation, uh, which of course we'll be discussing in the rules section later on. But that's pretty much it. Just a quick summary of both of those chips. If you have any further questions, of course, let me know. And also the rest of the community who are also willing to help. But that's pretty much it. It's a simple breakdown. And the wild card you can't play anyway in game week one, because of course we have unlimited changes to make right now. And let's move on to the rules. Remember, you can see all of these rules and have more clarification on the UEFA website or on the UEFA Gaming Hub app. And yeah, everything that I've pretty much been saying is all broken down there. Uh, I'm just doing it in video format. 
So the kind of first section of the rules uh, where it talks about match days is pretty much what I discussed at the beginning of the video. So it says every match day except the final is split over more than one day, usually Tuesday and Wednesday within the same week. For each match day, once the first day's games have finished, you can make changes within your squad such as substitutions and changing your captain. Uh, that means that if any of your starting players doesn't score as many points as you would have liked, you can sub them out. So yeah, that should all be clear for you. Uh, picking your team name, when you create a team, pretty much you have to pick a team name, but you cannot change it after match day one, the deadline of match day one uh, ends. So you have to make it before match day one starts just, uh, for you to know. In FPL, you can continuously change it, but not in UCL Fantasy. Now picking your squad, I also alluded to this earlier. You have to have two goalkeepers, five defenders, five midfielders, and three forwards. And in terms of the budget, just like in FPL, you have 100 million, uh, I don't know why I said it like that, just 100 million um, to spend. But what changes and the big difference with FPL is that going into the knockout stages, your budget actually increases automatically to 105 million. And yes, there are price changes. They tend to happen, well, we'll be discussing it uh, later on when they actually breaks it down for you factually, uh, but there are going to be price changes. It just works differently to FPL. Then we have the number of players per club. So just like in FPL, you can only have three players from the same club in the group stages, but this increases as we evolve and progress into the competition. So in the round of 16, we can have four players from the same club. In the quarterfinals, you can have five. In the quarterfinal or the semifinals, you can have six. And in the final itself, you can have eight, uh, which obviously makes sense. Otherwise, you kind of be limited there. So if any of your players is transferred to another Champions League club during the season, they'll stay in your squad. However, if that player takes you over the player limit for a given club, you'll have to transfer them out next time you make transfers. So just like FPL, pretty much no kind of confusions there. If any of your players are knocked out of the Champions League, they'll stay in your squad and you can keep them for the rest of the season if you want. However, once they're out of the competition, they won't score you any more points. So that's pretty much all fair and square. And then starting late, you can create a team at any point during the competition. If you create a team between match days, you'll start scoring points from the following match day. If you create a team during a match day, you'll start scoring points from the next day within that match day. So yeah, that's pretty much their kind of policy on that. And then in terms of managing your squad, for each match day throughout the competition, you need to select 11 players for your starting 11, of course, and you have 15 players available to choose from. All your match day points will not be scored by the players in your 11, not the 11 players who start the match day in your team, but those that finish that match day in your team. So of course, that's where automatic or manual substitutions come into play. Anyone who substituted out cannot be substituted back in. Uh, doesn't matter if you did it by accident or not. You have to be very sure when you make those decisions. And then for every match day except match day 13, the final, you'll be able to sub in players uh, in and out depending on their performances with the aim of ending the match day with the highest scoring 11 players from your squad, uh, which makes complete sense to be fair. And then you'll need to save your team before each match day deadline which is the kickoff time of the first game within the match day. In FPO, of course, it's around, I think, an hour and a half now from the deadline or of the actual kickoff. Um, so that's to kind of prevent lineups and stuff, um, you know, for you knowing that uh, beforehand. With UCL Fantasy, the kind of uh, privilege you have is that you're able to see the lineups and then you can make changes accordingly. That's why you can always leave the transfers to the very last minute where you have as much information as possible and the price rises happen after the deadline passes. Um, so, you know, I would always recommend if you can just save your transfers up until the very end, just in case. Uh, whenever I've made kind of early ones, I've, yeah, I've just literally uh, suffered from it, to be honest. So the formation section, uh, going to be very similar to FPL. You can choose any formation for your team as long as you've picked one goalkeeper, at least three defenders, at least two midfielders and one forward. So pretty much the exact same as FPL. Um, nothing really to be confused about there. In terms of selecting a captain, every time you save your team, you'll need to pick a captain from your starting 11. And then of course, that player's points are doubled for anyone who is new to the kind of captaincy system in fantasy football. If your captain plays on the first day within a match day and doesn't score as highly as you like, just like I discussed with you earlier, you can swap them out for someone who has yet to play. So that's pretty much all kind of uh, easy to go with. Uh, I'm not really going to go into this too much more. Um, let's talk about the manual substitution. So yeah, between match days, once again, like I discussed, you can make as many subs as you want. And after all the matches on a single day are finished and before the next matches within that match day kickoff, you can sub out 
a maximum of four players, of course, your goalkeeper and three outfield players. And of course, once again, you can change your captaincy. So if you decide not to make manual substitutions and micromanage your team, automatic substitutions come into play. So like it says here, if you don't make any subs or change your captain within a match day, some of your players might be automatically subbed out. You can order your substitutes by priority in case of your starting 11 doesn't play that match day. So literally all you have to do is switch. So here, even when you put, uh, let's say, sub in, then you literally can just go to another substitute like Gundawan and switch order. So that's pretty clear for you there. Uh, hopefully that is... Uh, yeah, not too much of an issue. If your goalkeeper doesn't play in a match day, your replacement goalkeeper will be subbed in as long as he has played and as long as you haven't made any other manual changes to your squad during that match day. So yeah, remember, if you make any manual substitutions, uh, automatic substitutions do not come into play at all, regardless of the situation. And if any of your starting outfield players don't play in a match day, they'll be automatically subbed out and the player subbed in will be the highest priority substitute. So whether it's first, second or third. And of course, it also depends on the valid formation you have. Let's kind of give an example. So let's say I had three defenders in here. Let's... um. Let's actually sub out Zaydu for Gundogan. So let's say I have three defenders and let's actually put Casimiro as my first sub to make this point very clear. So I have three defenders, four midfielders, three attackers. Um, so let's say for example, Diaz doesn't play and I haven't made manual substitutions. So automatic subs come into play. Casimiro is my first sub. So you would think he comes on uh, for Varane if he doesn't play in match day one, but that would not happen because I would need another defender to fill in in order to fill in the quota of three defenders in my starting 11. So it would then move on to the next player on my bench who's a defender and who has played a game. So in this case, it'd be Van Dijk and if not, uh, Zaydu. Uh, so hopefully that's entirely clear. It's the same with midfielders. You have to have at least two midfielders Otherwise, it will kind of prioritize your bench in a different way. Uh, but if that's not really an issue and you have a valid formation regardless, whoever's first on your bench will be coming on um, first, of course, uh, before your second and third substitutes. So another kind of top tip here is to check if your auto subs are already disabled for that match day. You have to look at the on or off toggle above your lineup on the pitch. So if you go on your lineup and you go to, I think it's the top right hand side of the screen, it will say auto subs on or off and it will tell you uh, it will be one of them for sure um, but of course if you don't make manual substitutions it will be automatically uh, turned on and if you create your team part way through a match day you won't be able to make automatic subs for that first match day so hopefully that's completely clear and now let's look at the transfers a bit more uh, fun in terms of the rules section transferring players in and out of your squad helps you get more points throughout the season of course before the Champions League kicks off you can make as many transfers as you like as long as you stay within the budget you can also make as many transfers as you like between the group stage and round of 16 once again I discussed this earlier between match day 6 and 7 after the group stage ends and just before the knockout begins, you can make unlimited transfers to your team. And throughout the competition, you get free transfers each match day where no points will be deducted from your score. The number of free transfers you can make depends on the stage of the competition. Bear in mind that if any of your players get injured or become unavailable for any other reason, you won't get any extra free transfers to compensate. Uh, and if you make extra transfers beyond the limit, you're going to be taking a minus four hit for every extra transfer you make. And then, yeah, that's pretty much what it says here. For every transfer you make uh, beyond the quota, four points will be deducted and this accumulates. So if you make four transfers, uh, four extra transfers uh, beyond what you're allowed to do, you're going to be taking a minus 16 hit. So just bear that in mind. And because of the way points are calculated, this will be deducted from your overall score rather than your match day score. Uh, so that's just kind of similar to FPL once again. And in terms of the transfers you can make, obviously right now we can all make unlimited transfers to our team with no point hits. Bef uh, during the group stage, we get two per match day. And then before the round of 16, once again, unlimited. Then before the round of 16, uh, second leg, it will be free. Then before the quarterfinals will be five, before the second leg of the quarterfinals will be free, before the semifinals will be five, before the semifinal second leg, it will be free. And then before the final, it will be five. So quite a clear pattern there that you can see in the knockout stages. Uh, but as of now, we have unlimited. And then during the group stages between match days one, two, three, four, five, and six, we have two uh, free transfers per match day. If you don't use your free transfers, and this is something that's commonly asked on this channel, uh, between match days, you'll only be able to carry one forward to the next match day, meaning you can't stockpile free transfers over several rounds. So yeah, if you don't make transfers for two or three match days, you're not going to get four to six free transfers. Uh, it will literally just be capped 
at what it says there. If you use your wildcard or limitless chip, then no free transfers get carried forward. And once the knockout stage starts, you can't carry any free transfers forward between match days. Looking at the deadlines now, before the Tuesday 14th of September, you have to make your transfers for match day one uh, because that is when the deadline passes. For match day two, it will be the 28th of September, match day three, the 19th of October, match day four, the 2nd of November, match day five, the 23rd of November, uh, match day six, the 7th of December, and then we're looking at 2022. Uh, so match day seven, the round of 16 first leg, that will be the 15th of February. Uh, the second leg of the round of 16 is the 8th of March. The quarterfinals, the first leg is the 5th of April. The second leg is one week later on the 12th of April. And then just a few weeks later uh, for match day 11, the semi-finals first leg, Tuesday 26th of April, and then same thing pretty much second leg the 3rd of may one week later and then at the end of may the 28th exactly that is when the final will take place so just make sure to make your uh, transfers uh, before the deadline passes and of course you can see the lineups for certain games uh, one hour before and you can make changes regardless uh, not like in fpl now we're looking at player prices so they're all going to remain the same up until the end of match day two. So from match day three onwards, which is pretty much halfway through uh, the group stages, we're going to, well, they're going to adjust um, player prices based on the performances of the first set of games. Prices will keep changing throughout the season, depending on how many points they score. So it's not even uh, kind of based on transfer activity like in FPL. It's based on the performances and the amount of UCL fantasy points that each player um, scores. And in terms of the chips, I pretty much already kind of broken them down there but if not you can go on the rules section of the app or the UEFA gaming website and you can see a breakdown there of the wildcard and the limitless chip. Now in terms of the point scoring system uh, we're kind of approaching the end of the rules section here. Throughout the season your players will score points based on their real life performances of course. Some actions are awarded the same amount of points regardless of the player's position yet others actually change. Um, so let's actually just do a quick uh, overview of all of these. So making an appearance is one point, 60 minutes on the pitch is another. Goals from outside the box, you actually get an extra point and this is something I talked about in my first draft video. Uh, in terms of an actual assist is three points. Every three balls recovered is one. Um, so that's why uh, I actually was talking about Aspilicueta as my potential captain. He makes a lot of ball recoveries, he's playing for a very good defence so he could easily get a very high score and some of the players that are very good with ball recoveries, you can check out in my first draft video. Uh, I highlight some of the best options there, of course. N'Golo Kante is one of them, uh, but there are many, many more. So defensive midfielders, centre-backs, full-backs, uh, and just even central midfielders, they can all be viable options despite not scoring or assisting as much. In terms of player of the match award, they actually uh, give three points now. Um, I think that's actually a change. I'm not too sure about that. I don't remember seeing that uh, last year when I was uh, doing this sort of video. Uh, winning a penalty, you get two points. So even if someone wins a penalty, but it's not converted, they've still got the two points for winning the penalty in the first place. Um, yeah, even if it's converted, they're not going to get an extra assist on top of it. It will just be two points uh, for the penalty. That is one. Uh, conceding a penalty, you actually lose minus one points. Uh, missing a penalty, you lose minus two. A yellow card is minus one, red card minus three, and an own goal is minus two. So all of those are pretty much the same as FPL. There's no changes there. Scoring a goal as a goalkeeper is six points. I mean, are we going to see another Allison this season? I'm not too sure. Saving a penalty is five, clean sheet is four. Every three saves is one point. Every two goals conceded is minus one point. And then defenders scoring a goal, just like a goalkeeper, it's six points. To be honest, goalkeepers should probably get 10 for that, in my opinion, but that's just the way I see it. A clean sheet is four, and every two goals conceded, just like a goalkeeper, you lose a point. Midfielders get five points for scoring a goal and one point for the clean sheet. And a forward gets only four points. Uh, but there are so many options in UCL Fantasy, as you can probably imagine, um, that, yeah, everyone's going to be going for a lot of premium strikers. Uh, and the midfield, actually, despite having some good options, I just don't think they quite stack up compared to the forwards. Another kind of extra tip that this rule section provides is that when a penalty is awarded for a handball, no points are awarded or deducted uh, for anyone, which is obviously... 
I'd say it's quite fair to be honest, I wouldn't really complain about it too much. Points are usually calculated within three hours of the final whistle of the last match of the day, uh, within that match day of course. Uh, and some stats may be adjusted during this time based on information from referees or data providers. So sometimes you could see for example Messi scores a goal, uh, he gets four points for scoring a goal, but it might have been outside the box. You won't see that extra point for that goal outside the box until after the points are calculated towards the very end. So hopefully that's clear. In the case of balls recovered, we'll calculate this stat when we calculate your points at the end of the day. There may be some discrepancy between the data in fantasy football and other sources, but once we calculate this number as part of the daily points calculation, it won't be adjusted afterwards. So yeah, just uh, if you're going to be claiming some extra ball recovery points, it's not going to happen. Uh, bear in mind that once your points have been calculated, yep, they can't be adjusted. Same thing there. Minutes played. Every player who plays in any given match day scores one point, and then of course 60 minutes, as we discussed in the point scoring system, uh, they get an extra point. Uh, and this excludes injury time actually um, in terms of you know playing 60 minutes um, so that's a, a bit of an interesting one there uh, and then of course minutes played once again will be confirmed upon the end of calculation uh, in terms of assists a player gets points for an assist whether he plays the final pass cross header or shot which leads to a goal and this also applies to set plays corners free kicks and throw-ins players also get points for an assist if a goal is scored on the rebound when they've shot against the post or bar when an attempt on goal is blocked on the goal line by the opposing player the player who takes that shot will get points for an assist they'll also get points for an assist when their pass shot or cross leads to an own goal so same as FPL there. Players that win a penalty don't get points for an assist. Instead, they get two points. Uh, once again, I discussed that there. Now, this is actually a key difference uh, compared to last season, I believe. And it's something that they brought in for Euro 2020 fantasy football. So when a goal is scored from a solo run or dribble, no player is credited with the assist. So if you imagine Messi against Real Madrid in the semi-finals of the 2011 Champions League, Busquets passing it to Messi, he dribbles past four or five. That won't count as an assist for Busquets, uh, which, to be honest, I completely agree with. Only one player can get points for an assist for any one goal, of course. And uh, that's pretty much it, to be honest. The player of the match award, this is a, the kind of interesting one here. At the end of every Champions League match, one player is given the player of the match award. This award is decided by UEFA's technical observer panel. When a player wins this award, he'll score an extra three points for that match day. And I'm convinced that that's new I, I don't remember it last season and uh, that will be interesting it's pretty much like bonus points but instead of having maybe three players or more on bonus points you only have one and he gets the man of the match award and all three uh, points kind of just addressing a few last questions that some people may have in terms of red cards if a player gets a red card a sent off they'll continue to be penalized for goals conceded by their team after they've been sent off if a player gets a yellow card and then a red card they'll only be penalized for the red card if your captain gets a red card you can transfer the captaincy to one of your other starting 11 as long as your new captain hasn't already played so even if someone gets sent off you're not now given uh, the option to change it to someone who's already played. You know how many points they've scored. They've got maybe 15 points and you want to get the captaincy on them. It doesn't work like that. You can't sub off players who get a red card. <laughs> That's a bit of a, uh, you know, that must thing. It's not happened to me yet, but, you know, of course, because I've said that now, it definitely will. Extra time and penalties. Players will keep scoring points throughout extra time. However, players who play 120 minutes can't get double appearance or clean sheet points two times 60 minutes for example and won't score any points during penalty shootouts so yeah once again you know can't really complain with that in terms of leagues you can actually reactivate some of the leagues you had from Euro 2020 fantasy football and also UCL fantasy last season but pretty much uh, yeah, there's not much really to kind of talk about there and uh, you can see all of this on the UEFA website or gaming hub but hopefully that's cleared up everything for you and if you have any further questions like I said before let me know down in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here and thank you to everyone we've reached 4,000 subscribers you know incredible growth over the last week or so uh, so yeah really appreciate uh, everyone who's engaged with the channel you know like the videos commented uh, and subscribed you know all of that good stuff sharing this video around um, you know just really appreciate it and yeah just remember to have a look at my other UCL Fantasy videos, same with FPL. The playlists are available on the channel and there'll be much more to come. With UCL Fantasy in particular, there'll be a deadline stream just before the deadline, of course. There'll be a team selection video, an updated draft video and more. Um, 
even maybe a chip strategy video if you want. Of course, uh, that also depends on your feedback. And with FPL, they'll be the best free hit team for game week four. And same with a team selection, preview, and deadline stream, reaction stream, and much more. Uh, so yeah, that will all be coming to the channel. And uh, yeah, good luck with UCL Fantasy this season and enjoy the Champions League. Hopefully it's even better than last season. And I'll see you next time.